with six and a half stars, that's $14. Conditions apply. Whatever you call them, they'll have the kind of shot from Mom Nichols. They brought out a delicious new spicy version. McDonald's spicy chicken McNuggets have more of a kick than you're used to, but they're just as nourish. And they come with a mouth-watering spicy buffalo dipping sauce, or not so spicy aioli. So if you like spicy moments, you can love Macca's new spicy chicken McNuggets. We wait one minute until we come back from this one before we kick off. We came down to the south coast of David Thirsty Mile. We stopped by the Gold Marches and tried them. Just wait one minute. We're just in a commercial break. We'll come back. We'll start. Is that all right? To get your vehicle off ride, get installed to the Grand Avenue. We're just in a commercial break. We're going to come back. So if you can just wait for two seconds. Head down and check out the huge range of ARB 4x4 parts, accessories, camping gear, and much more. Talk to the experts about a vehicle package to suit your needs and budget. Plus, to be kids entertainment, giveaways, and a massive ARB bill to be won. The ARB Noellen Grand Opening, August 11. Free Angus Flow Sleeping Grange. ARB Noellen, your new 4x4 specialist. Abigail is an unobtrusive activity sensor that sits on the shelf at Mum's place and alerts me on my phone if she knows how to fall. Peace of mind, and it only takes a minute to set up. Abby Bird. A little birdie told me, call 1-300-13-21-21 now. The continuous call team, live from Michael Crone and Oval Jaringong. Thanks to Coke's Hire, Channel 9, Lowe's, Harvey Herman, Booby Sock Trailers, Accor Hotels and Shimano. Well, as we welcome you back to Michael Crone and Oval, the two teams are out there, everything is in readiness. Carly Nolan, our referee, is about to get us underway. David Morrow, here he is for his call of the first raid for the continuous call team cup. Thank you very much, and there's the kick-off, and we're going to see Kayama defending the Southie. And that's going to go out on the full. In fact, it didn't go out on the full. It almost went into the uh, the practice ground, on the back, the back of the ground. And as a result, Kayama will get a penalty from the centre of the halfway line. And let's see what they do from here. Of course, this ground facing north-south. In fact, they take the tap, and Brown it is who takes it ahead quickly. And he's tackled around about 40 metres out now from the Jerangong end of the field, he'll play the ball and Martin, the the, uh, the dummy half, goes in and he feeds it off to the other big prop forward, hard onto the ball is Sutton and he's tackled about 35 metres out, I'm reliably informed he isn't related to the triplets as the ball goes to Martin, he gets the ball away and taking the ball up strongly as Nodes and Nodes is tackled, he's around about 25 metres out as they go back the open side again, here's Martin out of dummy half and going from Doe, going for a guard here as Mazzola, he gets the ball away, no he doesn't, he's held up, not far away from the goal line, they'll go well and left here as the ball comes away to the fullback Atkins, he's got a bit of the Atkins, but he didn't get his pass away, the ball is knocked down, did it come up, Jaron Gong, yes says the referee, knock on against Jaron Gong, Kiyama will get a scrum close to the goal line, and it's nil all at the moment, are we on here for Lowe's? We are, right, low scoreboard, it's nil all at the moment. And uh, we've got uh, the other two reserves that have just been given to me for 16 and 17. Thank you very much for that. That's OK. And uh, Daryl, it was a good start. Well, it was, well, it was a great start for Jaron, but a great start for Kayama. They, um, they got the penalty from the kickoff going too deep, and they're looking good there. And a great attacking position. Yeah. Ball comes back to the open side. It goes from Scott. He gets away to this tall centre, Cornell, and he gets the pass away on the outside. He's going to be playing it. And, of course, uh, two... Uh, you played against Stevie Morris, Darrell. Well, he's got two sons here playing for Kiama, one on the left wing, one on the right wing, and they look like Stevie. Well, that's <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, well, they don't look like the twins. That's the big thing, Bob. Yeah, really. well, you, what I hope they look a bit like. <laughs> well, <laughs> well you, you look at the twins and they're tall and rangy, and these two are shorter and very much in the mould of Stevie Morris. Are these two twins? No, they're not. Okay. Ball is going to be played here by Kayama, and they've got the ball close to the goal line as the ball is fed away to Bazzola. A long cutout pass, and it goes through the hands, and quickly they get it away. Taking the ball ahead is the big captain, Pool, and Pool goes over the top of one, but the referee's going to rule there was a little knock on in all of that. And Jerangong finally breathed a sigh of relief after kicking the ball out on the full from the, the, uh, the opening whistle. They're now going to finally get a strum feed. 10 metres out on the goal line and right in front of the Mick Cronin, uh, Mick Cronin Grandstand, I would presume you'd call it down here. I think everything's named after Mick, is it not? Yeah, call it. Everything, a whole lot's named after Mick. It's just magnificent. And this is the first touch they've got here, this team, the Gerringong side. So they've had to defend uh, a fair bit early on in this game. Can have started strongly, but is Gerringong trying to work it out from their own end? And they worked out. That's good, Darren. That was very nice of you. That's all right. I'll look after you, mate. I may have a cough too. <laughs> and Gumley Quine bringing the ball back. His name's Quine, by the way, not Quinn. Even though there's a lot of Quins uh, who, who hail from this area, because they're all related to Mick, of course. And two well, why isn't the Quine related? Oh, I don't know. There's a kick downfield. And dashing back towards the ball now is Dylan Morris. And it's going to go over the dead ball line. 
I'm not sure whether there's a breeze up there. Whatever breeze is up there, it's certainly behind Gerringong because that was a kick from what, about 40 metres out from the goal line at the Gerringong end of the field and it's comfortably gone dead at the far end. And as a result, Kramer are going to bring the ball back and this big fella Brown brings it back and he's tackled 30 out from his own goal line. When's the last time you called a game with one referee, Davey? Ah, uh, gee, I'd have to go back. I think it was one of those games you and I did uh, in the recent years in the New South Wales Cup. Uh, yeah, it was possible. I think it was possibly even last year or the year Can before. Can we go to the bunker for some reason? Can we go to the bunker? Bob, yeah. Bob Fulton, of course, he's in the bunker. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, it's Bobby Bunker. Bobby Bunker. I've got a question to ask you. How the, the, the Quinns and the Cronins related? <laughs> well, how are they related? Mick tell will, me. Mick will tell you. They're, they're all cousins and they're so, so on. No, they're not. They are. Well, Paul <laughs> Quinn, for instance. Call Paul again. Paul Quinn, Quinn, who you remember playing from here again. Well, Paul was a cousin of Mick. There we are. So, okay. Look, get back to the Put that in your pipe and smoke okay. it. Hang on. <laughs> try. Try. <laughs> try. Hang on a second. <laughs> That's the bunker from last night when, when C hit the wrong button. Yeah. Oh, uh, another blunder. So, what has the crime got to do with the Quinn? Oh, for heaven's sake, everyone calls him Quinn because he comes from this area, but his name is Gumley Quine. And he plays in the centres. Okay, a big tall rangy fella, ball played and here they come out of dummy half, they work the ball back to the right as Gundagai work it back towards the halfway penalty, geez, and you could hear him, you could hear him, couldn't you? They've been doing it all day, Brett, get him on side! <laughs> Bob wants to say something, what do you want to say? Hey, he wants to whisper something to you. I'm in the middle of calling a game. Did you call that. somebody Gundagai? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> this is a bit different, Percy, isn't it? <laughs> Red, Red brings it back and he's tackled around about 20, uh, 20 mud metres out from the Kiama line. 15 metres in front touch. Gunder guy on the attack. Low scoreboard. Nil all as Russell offloads the ball in the centre of the park. Taylor takes it ahead and he's tackled the big Gerringon front, uh, front rower. He's tackled about 15 metres out. They go back to the left and he comes away to the halfback, Russell. And in the centre of the field, Collins takes it ahead. In fact, it's Roberts and Roberts is tackled around about 12 or 13 metres out in the goalpost. As they quickly go on the attack again, they go in back to the left side of the field. It goes away to Russell. There's two of them out there, I must admit. That's the halfback of that at that time, Rickson. And uh, they're going to play the ball about five metres out from the goal line. They'll get the ball here and they'll go back. No, they don't. They decide to go the short side. He's gone pretty close to scoring here, Nathan sure. Ford. He's got underneath the uh, the and the first and short of try, about 15 metres in from the far side of the field. And as a result, it is uh, Gerringong leading by four points to nil over Kramer. And I'm trying to work out how much have we had so far. How much time do we have? There's a clock up there. You have to stand up and look out there, baby. Whereabouts? It's up there on the right on the scoreboard. Is there a clock on the scoreboard? Yeah, there Six is. minutes gone. Thank you very much, Mark Levy. He's the timekeeper. Let's go to our my associate uh, commentators here for be at Goodrich Tyres. Just about you had four of those on each of your cars today when you came down. Yeah. I reckon yeah. it's well, well, a bit hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is Captain Obvious sometimes, Bob. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the nightmare. <laughs> what are we going to drive down on the rims? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Thirsty, I think I've got a bit of a problem with Drunk of Bob. But with the one referee, I don't think I'm going to get a say here. <laughs> I, think, I think our referee, she was uh, she did the Lyle grade game last year, if you remember. She's very good. Yeah, she's excellent. She well, she's very been there. Uh, he's, he's on target to do the grand final here this year. Uh, very highly regarded. Yeah. Uh, in fact, they're mostly regarded as the best referee, certainly in Group 7. She's been rated the number one referee in Group 7 for two years in a row and in all likelihood we'll get that. She's done a little bit in Sydney too, David, yeah. in the, in the low grade. Yeah. Yeah. She's done a bit of that. She's, yeah, she's, she's very talented. Well. Well, she's done pretty well so far and this is the first kick of the afternoon. And uh, it looked pretty good. It goes straight over the black dot as uh, Jake Taylor converts the try that was scored uh, by uh, the captain and the hooker, Nathan Ford. And as a result, Gerringong leading uh, by six points to nil. And uh, this will be interesting whether the ball hangs in the breeze. That'll give us an idea whether yeah. there's, a, well, there's a breeze or not. It's certainly a breeze, but it's just where it's going. Well, it was a big point. kick, wasn't it, from the Gerringong before the went dead in goal. And they did it from the kick off as well, so he's the... Is he set that all right? It's gone. Jeez, look at those passes. And would you believe Winchester had it, and he lost control of it as he hit the big bumper bar on the goalpost. He tried to get it away to the big prop board in Cal Collins. He just couldn't handle it, so it's a knock on in the in goal area. And would you believe, again, they're on the back foot from a restart here, Jaron Gong, they're going to have to restart the action with a line drop out from underneath their goalposts. Yeah, unbelievable, David. How do you know all these names? Here's the drop out. Here's an opportunity for Clamour to hit back. Vizola takes the ball and he uploads. This fellow's a big fellow, Luke Sutton. He's tall and he's tackled about 35 metres out from the Jaron Gong line. He'll play the ball in the centre of the field. And uh, Martin at halfback, he offloads the ball. It comes back to the open side. 
as they take the ball ahead and it looks like Martin, I should say Brown, who's got it. feel good. <laughs> Martin off loads and there's Sutton, he gets it away to Scott. A long cut out ball, it's a horrible pass, it goes along the ground and uh, on the far side, Matt Morris has it but he's going to be bundled in the touch. It was a horrible pass he was fed and Matt Morris had to scurry back and scurry across the field and by the time he got to it, the ball was in the touch and as a result, uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the Gerringong Lions will get a strum feed around about 35 metres out from their own goal line and obviously 20 metres you weren't going to say gun to guys, were you? <laughs> you, were you going to say gun to guys? No, I wasn't. <laughs> you were to say... You had gun to guy <laughs> passing the ball to gun to guy, <laughs> and then on the Winchester, I was waiting for a shot. <laughs> Firstly, how, how do, do you do that? How do you know these guys' names after only looking at them for like the last two hours? Well, I've only seen him for the last five minutes, I'm there. Yeah, but... no, he's been up there talking to them. And... Oh, no, oh, no, I was talking to Mick for a while up there, and I was looking at them. You was... did your preparation. Did a little bit of preparation, what you're allowed to do, but we, we see what we can do. The ball comes back to the right. In fact, it isn't uh, taken too far. As, uh, here they come again, Jaron Gong. And uh, Nate, they, they're going to play the ball, and here this fella, Nathan Ford, he's a pretty good footballer. He tried to get it away. There's many that think that he should be playing a lot better football than this. He's tackled uh, only about 30 metres out. We'll get back to that a little bit later. As it goes to Russell, he uploads the ball to his brother. It goes back across the field. Roberts has it. Intercepted. And racing down for Cameron Cornell. I don't think they'll catch him over the 40, over the 40. And Cameron Cornell races away and scores try on his first try under the black mark. 6 4 on the low scoreboard. Kick the gun as we go to Daryl Roman and Bob Fulton with a coach high replay. Okay, well, came out of nothing, didn't it, then? It was just a remarkable. They look like it was a beautiful backline move to start with from Gerringdog, but unfortunately the pass went straight into the hands of big tall Cameron Cornell who just took it, plucked it out of the air. He had a fair way to go, he had about 70 metres to go, but did it easily. He's a bit a little bit like that good winger from last night, I reckon. Campbell Graham looks a bit like him, doesn't he, the way he runs and everything, a big tall thing, all arms and legs, but he got he covered the ground very quickly and got there and just scored under the six. They were never gonna cut him down. A really good hit back there from Tiana. Well, we've got a bit of a problem here first. Well, I, I cannot make comments in relation to the game. I am a, a referee for the day. I'm in the bunker. Oh, that's true. Fair What okay. are you saying? You're saying the referees not, never make comments about the game? What well, do you think? Well, not you, you think they're sitting in the bunker saying, geez, not allowed to No, I'm, I'm sure they don't. But what I am saying is that you can't do it officially. I've got, yeah. to, I've got to be a little bit circumspect. Yeah. What are you saying that Ben Galea and Luke Patton don't say that, gee, that was a good part? Um, what a good chance. Did, did I say that? No, no I didn't. No. But I've got that big Zerk K commentary. I've got a big Zerk K commentary. That's all right. Right, we'll go we'll go just down if we find something controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that with this referee, I don't think there will be anything controversial happen. Uh, here's Rizola. That's unusual. Bob, the coach is on the sideline. He's giving instruction. It's, uh, there's the kick, and it's uh, all level here. All level at the Mick Cronin field, at the Mick Cronin Oval. It's uh, Gerringong 6, Kiama 6, after the intercept try taken by Cameron Cornell. And uh, now it's going to be Gerringong bringing the ball back to the halfway for the restart. This is good, isn't it, David? It's a reasonable crowd here. So I don't know what they normally get for days like this. I think this would be up to what they normally get here. What we've had over the last seven years. It's probably, look, it's hard to judge, isn't it? But it'd be over, over 900 people here, I reckon. Well, Maybe yeah, more. Yeah, a fair few here. Bringing the ball back now. I was scored through a dodge of Cameron Cornell. On, and that was back. As they go back to the open side of the Martin and they try to take it ahead here again, uh, does Kiyama as they Those work it back uh, through the lock forward here from the nose. He's tackled about three out of his own goal post. He's going to pass to Martin, they'll go back to the left. He goes to Vizola, Vizola the forward and he uploads the other forward, a decent forward. So we've got two forward players, one playing in the centre side for Kiyama, one playing as the hooker and captain for Gerringong. They work the ball Kiyama back to within about nine of the halfway line. Martin darts into dummy half, he'll go back to the open side. He looks for a runner, he gets it up. Referee said all clear. Collins gets up, looks at the man that put it on him and says, Ooh, there's a kick down Phil. Will it go dead? Winchester watching, watching, watching. It won't go dead. Winchester picks it up. He comes out from between the posts and then he's tackled about 10 metres out from his own goal post. He'll play the ball deep inside his own half. Yeah, it, was a, it was a great shot that tackle, David. He just lined him up. The ball was given to him. He hit him in the chest. There was nothing illegal in it. It was a great shot from the Gerringong line. As they work the ball back now, and this is uh, Jordan Chandler, I think, has gone out there already uh, for the Gerringong side. But number 15, the ball goes back to the left as they work the ball back to the halfway. And they're going to play the ball about five or six metres in uh, from this side of the field. And uh, we're running north-south here. We're at the southern end, aren't we? 
It's a strange field. It's a, it's a different field. Oh, there's a pass that goes to ground. Had it found its mark. They were certainly going to be reaching out and stretching this climate defence. Carl Collins, he got through a gap, but they couldn't get the onside version right. There's a knock on. And uh, Kaima are going to come up with the ball on or about the halfway and almost in the centre of the park. So where are we facing? I get lost. Well, they said that's the southerly. So okay. that, that's south, that's north. Right. So that's uh, east and west, the other end. Yeah, well, it's east and The ground so, runs east so, west. Yeah, Where yeah, played a bit of football. Yeah, the Sydney Sports Ground was running east exactly west. Exactly right. But you said this ground was running near south. I did. Right. east west. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. It depends if you're running the other way, though. <laughs> <laughs> Right on the ground, <laughs> <runs east west. laughs> You know what? I've annoyed the hell out of him for a number of years, Bob. You're doing a good job. <laughs> You're doing a very good job. Sutton takes the ball ahead. Oh, and he's tackled about 35 metres out as they work the ball back to the right side and they bring it back strongly. And here's Whitaker. And Whitaker, the uh, the right second row for Kayama, is driven back by some good defence here by Gerangong. He'll play the ball about 35 metres out. The way it goes to Sutton. He pours a hole down the centre. But good defence brings him down. He's tackled around about 30 odd metres out. Martin goes back to the left side, he holds the ball up, away it goes through the hands of Scott, it goes to Vizola, he gets it away and charging onto the ball again, another mistake at six to go, the ball is shifted and picked up by Atkins, and the fullback of Kaima almost up through, but the referee said it was not there, of, uh, the, the hands of the Kaima player uh, by a Gerangon player, now charging onto the ball is this big fella James Brown, and he's tackled not far away, He's tackled close to the goalpost. He'll play the ball. And now Martin just scurries out of dummy half. He gets it onto Scott. Scott throws a dummy. Scott goes close. He's not far away. As the ball comes back to the right side of the field. And they take the ball ahead. And this should be a try. He made that look easy. Cameron really good. Charge onto the ball. Got on the inside of the defence. Out got on the left side of Gerringong's defence. And scores the try. That puts Kayama in front on the low scoreboard. By 10 points to 6. Yeah, and they always had an overlap there on their right side. But it was... The defence of Toby Gumley Quine, not Quinn, who came out of the line and made it very, very difficult for his outside defenders as he rushed up from the line. He missed the big, um, well, I don't know, is he back up? Cameron, Cameron Whitaker. Yeah. Cameron Whitaker, he just got on the outside of, of Gumley Quine and, and scored. He just crashed over, so well, well deserved there. It's a good game of footy, David. You know what, every time I've been down here, Bob, it has been a good game of footy. I've been thoroughly enjoyed it. They've always listen, been pretty listen, close. Listen, mate, I'm but, in the bunker. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. I mean, there's been no issues with any of the tries, so you can't bring me into it. Like, oh, can you go and sit somewhere like, look, there's a cold shed over there. Go and sit no, in there. Sit the bunker, yeah. We have no communication. <laughs> That'd be even better. <laughs> That's not bad, you. Thank you. Leave his gone. <laughs> You're in charge, baby. Where are you going to go tonight after after your call? Here? No, after you've done your seven, oh, the second game. Oh, the second Oh, let's make sure Matty Johnson gets here first, otherwise I'm not going to call him all through. Jeez, this will be a new world record. One last night, three today. Oh, what? Nothing wrong with that. You've done that before in the old days. Yes, you do. You do anything, mate. You enjoy the game. You love it. Yes, I do. I've done it for so long if I didn't enjoy it. You love it more than cricket? Well, I enjoy it. Well, it's, it's, the great thing about doing this is that it's only it's over in a couple of hours. Yeah. It used to be great when you and Bob played. Yeah, it's starting with your car at 10.30 and you're in the pub by 5.55. Five, five, five. Yeah. Well, my game was usually over after about 40 <laughs> minutes. That's the half of our Here's a Vizola from wide out. The kick looks good up the back because it's very good. Straight between the six and Kayama lead 12 points to six on the low scoreboard. In fact, my, your game was normally over before I got to the ground. Kayama Knights and Cameron Whittaker. Can you just say the back of the Vizola successfully converted that. Knights at 12, Jaron on six. Tell me to do that. Bob didn't play any second game, you know. Well, I dare say he wouldn't. Why? Why well, would he have ever played second grade? Because he was young once. Yeah, but he was young down here in the, the Wollongong region. He was a champion down here and went straight to the first grade as he should have. Uh, now he's sucking up to you. I mean, oh. you, you give it to the bunker every week and now you suck it up to it. <laughs> well, at least I know that he's right today. Because <laughs> you can't get it wrong. <laughs> here they come. He's not talking. Glamour, he's not talking now. Martin goes back to the right side and brings it under Brown. Brown, the uh, the prop forward, is tackled about 12 metres shy of the halfway line. Kayama with the ball. Jaron gone trailing. Kayama lead by uh, 12 points to six as Bazola the halfback. He puts in a towering kick downfield. This will be good. Winchester gets a horrible bounce, but then he scurries after the ball. He's going to pick it up. Racing downfield is Morris. And that Dylan Morris has almost got him. I can't see where they are at the moment. <laughs> It's over there, third you normally do. <laughs> I'm not going to get up. <laughs> I'm not going to it. was a great kick, I've got to say, from Vazala. He looks a decent player. He's kicked two goals from two. And he's, he's, um, 
and the distribution around the rush has been terrific so far. As they, uh, the, uh, the uh, Jerrigong side bring the ball back from uh, deep inside their own half, and a little half dummy trail on that far side. They're going to bring the ball back towards the 30 metre line. They've struggled to get out of their own end in this set, and uh, they struggle to get to their feet to play the ball there as the ball comes back now to the. the he lost the ball. Uh, the winger on the far side. Uh, Harry Phillips, I think you'll find it is, he's lost the ball and so Kiama are going to come up with the ball and they're going to come up with it around about 40 metres out on the opposition line. Gee, they're on top at the moment, aren't they? As Sutton takes the ball ahead and he tackles about 35 metres out from uh, Jaron Gong's line. He'll play the ball to Martin. Martin will go back and taking it up now is Brown. Brown goes straight, he goes hard. And he's tackled about 35, 30 odd metres out now from the goalpost. He'll play the ball at Gerringong's end of the field as they come the open side. Vazola drifts across field again. He's looking for a run. He throws the dummy and a good tackle. He's taken in a good tackle there. And it was Mulhall who made the tackle. And he'll play the ball close to the goal line. He gets up and plays the ball to Martin. Martin drifts back to the right side of the field. He looks for a runner and looks it and finds Sutton. And Sutton's taken the ground. He's not far away. Two or three metres out on the goal post as the ball goes to Martin. They go back to Vazella. Vazella goes one way. He goes the other. He ducks in behind the defence and he goes racing to the line. He's not effectively Hill says the referee then he's rolled on his back and he's tackled last tackle coming up they're not far away from scoring here a penalty penalty for failing to roll away from the tackle play and they did they have a shot at goal and take an eight point lead they're right in front of the six virtually yeah no what they do here because i'll tell you what his father would be happy with him fuzzy <laughs> oh, he's a hell of a golfer he was a hell of a golfer he beat greg norman in a US Open playoff that went 18 holes, do you remember that? Oh, of course I do. Yeah, well, it was one of, the, one of the great playoffs. Ball is played and going from dummy half as Martin. He gets the ball away to Scott and Scott had drifts across field, but Roberts has got him and then falls off the tackle, but Scott still held. There's two more Gerringong lines came to put him down. They're close to the goal line again here. Kiyama, they lead 12 points to six on the low scoreboard. The ball is played to Atkins. It goes to Martin. He drips across field. He throws a couple of dummies. Here's Big Sutton coming hard onto the ball. He flicks it over the top of the yard to over to Bozella. Bozella gets it away on the outside. They're going to go close to two. And again, here the hold up for the referee. Hold up on the far side of the field. I think it was Phil who was going hard onto the ball. And uh, he may well have been, in the end, held up not far away from the goal line. They're going to play the ball about 10 or 12 metres out. In fact, uh, where are they going to? Well, I don't know how they didn't score them, David, because that was an enormous ball from Luke Sutton, who's having a hell of a game. Here he goes again. He is a big unit, and he's creating enormous problems here for the Gerringong Lions. He's almost over himself. It's a great ball from him. Martin has the ball as they go back to the open side. Vozella gets it away. It goes to Scott. A long cutout pass. And Cornell goes to the line. He can't get a pass away. He was trying to get it away to Morris on the far side. There's a Gerringong player who got involved in the play. The ball, that could have been a penalty. It comes back to the open side. Vozella puts it over the top. And they're coming in numbers here. He's done four. He grabs the high mark and scores another try for Kayama. 16-6 kick the cut on the low score ball. Oh, the kick from Vozella was a beauty, but they knew exactly what was going on. It was Ethan Ford. As you said, David, just put it around here. Perfect And they deserved that because they have been by far the better side in this game. I know it probably turned when they took that little set and Cameron Cornell took it and, and put them on level terms. But after, since that, they've had most of the ball. The Gerringong side really struggling to hold the ball and they've been caught down their own area for a long time here now. And it's been all the Kiama Knights. The Zola kicks a beautifully weighted kick across field for Ford to just snatch it out of the air and score. They're going well, aren't they? The Knights? They are. Anything to add from the bunker? No controversy yet? You can't talk. That's all right. No, it's good. No, it's upsetting. Basically, turn yourself off. Literally. <laughs> Wish the NRL blokes would follow, sir. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen him like this. Well, I, I can start to talk yeah. down, down the line and, okay. and yeah. talk about penalties and all that type of stuff, but I'm not going to because I'm playing straight back to this particular game. Okay. And, uh, so you'll be talking to the referee though, not us. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm used to keep the car at least. You're a load of what's in that. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, your favourite players just come on too, I notice. Born Thistlequake. Who's favourite? I thought, isn't that your favourite player? Weren't you practising his name before the game? So this is going to be a tongue twister for you. It's like uh, Harry Will and I. I have no trouble with Tom Atkins. <laughs> Here's Vizola. He's right out here on this uh, touch line. The southern touch line. There's the kick. He kicked it pretty high. He kicked it in the direction of the post. It's another great kick from the halfback. 
They would convert the try that was scored by Ford. They three converted tries to Kiama, and they lead Gerringong by 18 points to six on the low scoreboard. Lovely sunny afternoon here in Gerringong as Kiama have taken a good, healthy lead here in the early part of this game. Aided and embedded, I must admit, by more possession and Gerringong's mistake, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, well, they're both equal on the low. They're both on 20 points here. The leading side has been Shell Harbour. He's only on 22, so they're equal second, actually, these two sides. But Gerringong are in front of them on four and against, but it's changing at the moment. They need to pull their finger out here, Gerringong. They just need some possession, then, they don't. Well, they keep dropping it, David. They, they've had the ball, but they just keep dropping it. Just if they got the ball then, by the way, as they bring the ball back. And they bring it back strongly here, and it's a good strong run by the lock forward Toby Nose. He's still going, Nose. He wasn't effectively held, so he went up and had another crack. And he finally got to the 40 metre line. He's inside a halfway. He'll play the ball to Martin, and Martin will upload the ball back to the open side, no doubt. So he'll find Bozella. The ball comes across to this side of the field again, and bring it back as uh, is Poole, the captain. And Poole is driven back by some good defence. 12 shy of the halfway, 15 in front touch. They'll go back the open side. They look for the, uh, the, the prop forward Brown. He goes one way, goes back the other. He tries to work his way up over the halfway line. He's taken in a good tackle. They're uh, sort of feeling for a tackle that went over the horizontal. I don't think they're going to get that. Here's Thistle Wait. And Thistle Wait goes hard onto the ball to be tackled. 40 metres out from the Gerringong line. Played to Martin. Open side to Scott on the last play. He puts up a towering bomb. Who's going to call for the ball? No one's going to call for the ball. It's allowed to bounce. And Winchester brings it back. And he's going to play the ball about 30 metres out. And uh, that was one of those ones, Darrell G. It was up there for long enough, I think. Someone should have caught it and taken on the pull, but they got a lucky bounce and they've got the ball, Jaron Gold. Yeah, they did get a bit of luck there, didn't they, David? No one was keen on taking it, and there was, there was probably about eight or nine players from the four from both sides having a look at it and just letting it bounce. Unfortunately for the for the um, Gerringong, sorry, it bounced back to their fullback, so that saves the day. I, I think if they can control the ball, Gerringong, they've certainly got the ability out wide to create a few problems, but at the moment, as I've said before, they just can't get through a set of six. On the halfway line, and Gerringong work at a crossfield, and here's uh, their very good hooker in 40, throws a long, loopy pass, it goes to Phillips. And Phillips will do well to stay in the field of play. The defence is coming. They came in numbers. They pushed him into touch. He was always going to be under pressure because it was a Harbour Bridge pass that he had to wait to catch. And that gave the defence plenty of defence too, I might add. Getting there and the moment he got it, it was always going to be a struggle to stay in the field of play. Yeah, he keeps poking his head through the line, doesn't he, when he gets the ball, Nathan Ford? He's a, he's a big hooker, isn't he? He's a tall boy. He is a big hooker. But he's got a bit of skill too. He, he's got the ability to get to sit through the line and offload a ball on that occasion. He did exactly that. Unfortunately, there was no one close to him. They're just pulling time off here. There's one of the, one of the Gerringong players down here. I think he's OK. I think he's doing his bootlaces up, to be honest with you. Winchester. Is it? Yeah. yeah, I think he's doing his bootlaces up. Doing a bit of tail, taking him off. I don't know what he's doing. But he's doing some tape around it. And he'll be OK, which I think... Both sides would be happy with that bit of a break here, so the boy's standing at the scrum just having a chat. You'd remember his dad, Peter, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, the Bulldogs legend. Yeah, that's right. Well, the on against. the board there, wasn't he? He still is, I think, and I think he actually played against the bloke alongside you, but he's not allowed to talk, is he? So let's go to this side, the end of the uh, the table, around the ground with Mark Levy. Yeah, we'll get a preview of the St Georgia Lawara Warriors game at halftime in this match here at Gerringong, but the team news has been sent through to me by our reporter James Willis. The Dragons, 1-17, to no changes for the Warriors. Paul Harris will not make his comeback today following an injury to his left knee. He's going to New Zealand for surgery after injuring his right knee, so Simon Mannering takes his place in the second row in jumper number 15, Sam Lasoni joins the bench in jumper number 21. The Dragons and the Warriors kicking off in about 32 minutes. Yes, yeah, sad news for Torhu Harris. He's been out with a left knee, Mark. I think he heard it in, uh, injured it in uh, training yesterday. So uh, uh, it's a big blow for, for the Warriors. It's certainly their best performances this year have been when he's playing on that right side. Bringing the ball back is uh, Dylan Morris and he tackles just short of the halfway line. Brown takes it ahead for Kiama. They've got the ball back towards the halfway. The, uh, the halfway. It's 18 points to six on the low scoreboard. Kiama leading Gerringong. The ball is played. They'll go back to the right side. Martin goes one way. Hard onto the ball and uh, this looks like Nobes again has been a willing worker for the Kiama side. He's tackled about 40 metres out. They'll go back to the left as Martin goes one way. He goes the other and uh, Martin, he's still trying to keep going. He's tackled there by his opposite forward and he's tackled about 35 metres out. Last tackle coming up for Kiama. It's certainly very sunny down that end of the field as the ball goes to Scott. He puts up a high bomb coming for the ball and taking it well was Winchester. The defence got there and took him in turn very well and he's going to play the ball just in the field of play. He's going for a gallop out of dummy heart there as your man Gumley Quine, and he's tackled around about 10 metres out as they work the ball back towards the 20 to Gerringong, and they're trailing at the moment. They've got to be able to hold on to the ball for a set of six. 
and see whether they can get down the other end of the park as they work the ball back towards their own 30. I think they're quite capable of it, though. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But as you said, they, they just need to get into this game and get through a couple of sets of six and just settle down a little bit. They're just a bit excitable. Well, why wouldn't they be? Continuous four teams here. Collins brings the ball back. And uh, they've only worked it out to their own 40 on the last play as Ford goes from dummy half. He puts a kick. It's not a bad kick, you know, because the ball has bounced. It's gone into touch. Now, is it a 40-20? Can we go to the video? I think it's very close here. Can we go to the bunker to determine whether it's a 40-20 or not? No, no, it's not, says the referee. So we don't need to go to the bunker. I don't think he's much used it was, awfully, it was awfully close. He's just having a burger. <laughs> anyway, is that his second or his third? Or? No, no, he doesn't eat that much. His body's a temple. Yeah, well, of course. That's why he's got a body like that, and we've got a body like it. As uh, think it's, yourself, David. <laughs> Kiama bring the ball. They're going to get a strong feed here. What's a bad kick? Uh, getting back on that far side. Matt Morris looked and then said, "No, nah, it might go out on the full." It actually bounced behind him, and as a result, it's a claim of scrum food, but it certainly gives Gerringong a bit of relief. A good defensive set here, and who knows where they'll go, but gee, this fellow's been good. The halfback, Cameron Bazola, as he works it back with the 30. Martin, he gets it away. He gets it away now, and taking the ball up quickly is Poole, the captain. He's tackled 10 shy of the halfway, 10 in from touch. Martin gets it away now to one of the try scorers, Ethan Ford. He's tackled near the halfway. He'll play it again to Martin. He'll go back the open side. Brown, in turn to Thistlethwaite, and Thistlethwaite is tackled on the halfway. Cut with the props involved there, one of them very heavily was Jake Taylor, on the halfway, they'll come back to the left, the ball goes away to Vozella, he puts it up high in the air, was he put down after he put the kick in, going back and uh, going back with the flight of the ball, that was a great take, Toby Gunley Klein, he went back with the flight of the ball, and uh, they did wonderfully well to catch that ball, and uh, he really has uh, taken and turned defence into attack here, because Gerringong have already worked the ball beyond their own 40 metre line. Oh, he did a great job then, he, he really was a difficult ball to take, and he, he did the right thing, he made the decisive decision there, he said, I'm going to take this, and he, as you said, David, he's running the same way as the flight of the ball. This has been a better set from the, from the Gerringong lines. A bit of dummy half running, quick play the balls, they're making some metres. And they've got the ball about 35 metres out from Kiama's line, as it comes back to the right, and they send the ball away, and they take it ahead strongly on this side of the field, and this will be Danny Wedd, and he's tackled about 25 metres out, in fact, it's the uh, Chandler who's out here playing on the right centre position, up to the halfback, Ricks and Russell, he pumps it high in the air, there's pressure on here, did it come up Kiama, I think it came up for Kiama's shoulder, it's picked up now by Gerringong, the referee said it was played at by Kiama, and so it's six to go from Gerringong, 12 metres out from the Kiama goal line, they'll get up and play the ball, they play the ball now forward, he uploads the ball to Taylor, and Taylor, good solid run, he's got the ball to within five or six metres of the goal line. I wish they played the game down this end of the field more often, Darrell. It's a bit easier for us. Winchester. Winchester gets it away and flying out of the line. Great one-on-one -on -one strip here by Ethan Ford. Taking the ball up was Isaac Russell and Ford came racing in, but the touch is in. The touch is in. Oh, Isaac get Russell. Oh, the old Bingo Lance is in. We haven't seen that. When was the last time we saw that? I reckon Mr. Week was the last one I saw come in with the flag in the air. That's something with Marty Week. <laughs> Well, he's got, he's a swaggy arm here from the 5'8", Isaac Russell here. He got stripped of the ball by Ethan Ford and wasn't happy about it. And then when he came in and threw a swinging arm, so this is a deserved penalty. The linesman's done a great job here by seeing that. It looks like, who was that referee? He used to be the referee's boss. Greg McCallum. Looks like Greg McCallum, doesn't he, this bloke? Might be his son. <laughs> oh, Greg was a bit fitter than that in his day. Have you seen him lately? Yeah, I have seen him like that. I said in his day. <laughs> well, that's a... That's oh, so bad. This bloke's doing his best and you're bagging him. Stop half -back. giving him thumbs up. If, if you take out the continuous call team, you lose six no, points. No, the halfback actually waved and said sorry. So give him a rap. Zola. He's having a way of a game as the ball goes back now. Here's Sutton again. He gets the ball away to Thistles. Wait, they saw him coming. A good tackle over there by Corey Mulhall. He'll play the ball 15 shy of the halfway line. And uh, they take the ball ahead. It's a wake who's gone out there now in the headgear for Kiama. Saw him warming up upstairs. I knew they were up the top there. I knew he was the second hooker. As he runs the ball back to the right, the ball comes away. Taking the ball up is Whittaker. And Whittaker is short of tries. Lost the ball as he was tackled. Now this is Gerringong's chance, big man. They're going to get possession on the halfway line uh, over on that northern side of the field so if uh, they're going to get a chance to try and put some points off this is it well, absolutely it is it's a great opportunity for them and i thought their last set was better that once again though they made a mistake they got stripped of the ball he threw an arm out to isaac russell got penalized so 
Still, Bishop was really hurting them. How long is that to go, David? I can't see the scoreboard. Nine to go in the first half by my reckoning. If that clock is telling me the story that I think it is, because it's certainly not, not, not it's certainly more than nine minutes gone. Visitors lead. That's uh, Kiama, 18 points to what, six over Derry. What does it say, nine? It's nine to go, David. David, would you? What's it say? It says eight. Is it digital or is it the other way? It says eight. eight okay. So, it says a couple of minutes gone. It says, it says oh eight. <laughs> that used to be a very important figure. Ball is played for about ball. 35 metres, point oh eight. Ball goes away and they <laughs> take the ball across. <laughs> now Rickson Russell takes the ball ahead. And he's tackling about 25 metres out in the goalpost. Here they come, Jaron Gong. They'll come back to the right. And uh, they, it was a, oh, they thought about a second man play. They thought about a front man play. Then he managed to get his arm free and upload the ball to Taylor. And they've got the ball about 11 metres out. They'll go on the attack here again. But Ford goes back to the left side. Long cutout ball. And uh, they tried to keep the line through. Roberts is loose. It's on the ground. Picked up by Taylor. He gets the ball away now. Winchester has a crack on his own. Winchester gets away from one. He gets away from two. Winchester straightens up. Winchester to the line. They keep it alive. I think it was touched in flight by Kayama. The long pass goes to Phillips. And I reckon it's Ford and in the tap. And there's no, there's no try for top of the Gerringong line. Yeah, it looked good, didn't they, for a while there. It was last play and they were throwing it about a bit. There was a long pass thrown. I think it did flow forward. He also dropped it as well. So there's a few reasons they didn't score that one. It was a forward pass and two, he dropped it. Yeah, that's a good good version. Thank you. You like it up this end of the field, don't you? Well, I can see them a bit more. Yeah. It's a bit easier. You got some binoculars? Yeah, I've got them here now. I'm just having a look at it. Good job. That's it. But it's when they get down the other end. Here's your favourite player, Thistle Slate. Bring it back for Kramer. <laughs> He's got around 25 metres out of You remember the old days you used to grab them and make a wish when you, you know, blew them and they all flew around with the real blue on them? What's that? This looks like... Wake, wake as a dummy up. That's something you have been for a while today, but not long. <laughs> ball comes back to Sutton, and Sutton takes the ball back within five of the halfway line. As Vozella gets the ball again, he's kicking, he's kicking to the open spaces. It'll sit up over here and bring it back. I haven't seen him touch the ball yet. This is doozy. They tell me he can score some doozy of tries if he's given some space. <laughs> You're on fire, baby. <laughs> Ball is big deal. I might have knocked him there. Look at the poor fella. He's got up and he starts hobbling around <laughs> as the ball goes back to the left side for Gerringong. And they try and work it back to the halfway through Gumley Pine. He's tackled about five metres shy of the halfway. Imagine if his sister married Justin Dooley. She'd be Emily Doozy Dooley. <laughs> There are times when you wish. Ball goes back to the right side of the field as Taylor brings the ball back to the halfway line. They've got a chance here as they quickly move the ball to this side of the field. Russell, the 5 8, has it. He offloads the ball. It goes to Chandler. Back it goes. Oh, it goes to Winchester. Gee, I'm not sure who called that forward, but maybe the touch he did on this side. I, I think it was a few of the trainers might have thrown forward and forward from this side. Yeah, I, mean, I heard it come through in the back of it. It was a guy in the building. Greg McCallum. Greg McCallum. He got yeah. it right now. There's a, there's a referee to my left, the reckon, was forward too. Mark Levy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Levy. 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 Mark <laughs> yeah, you were a former, you were a former referee in the form of Cameron Smith, Ricky Stewart, and others. <laughs> well, that's one thing. <laughs> I think you were, the, you were very good at it, Bob. Uh, you probably thought Ricky really everything like that. You're the most injured in those days. Let me take a little dirty job, as you know. Wake has the ball, they go back to the right. She just fellas had a good game, only Luke Sutton. It's a, it's a warm afternoon, and these big fellas obviously don't do the fitness training that the NRL players do. And uh, she just puts some, put some big yards in. Tissel's weight takes it ahead. Now I hear the Gerringong bench saying, Ford, Ford. Or oh, maybe it was a few of the crowd. No, they're yelling at the one of their players, his name's Ford. <laughs> Yeah, Marty! <laughs> goes back to that. There's one on each side too. And would you believe that they're short a try to Marty! Beat them short to uh, the KM. As they quickly move the ball to the left side here by Vazella. And uh, Nathan Ford has actually scored one for Jericho for Jeringong. As Marty, the ball Marty, comes Marty. back and here's the nose. No drop loads the ball to Atkins. Atkins to Vazella. Vazella gets the ball. Yeah! And he drops it. The ball has been dropped over here by Dylan Morris. I don't think the pass was that good though. As they again found a little bit of space down this left side. And this combination, uh, Vizola, is uh, very, very good. Yeah, he's got me calling him Vizola. <laughs> Just call him Fuzzy. <laughs> but they, uh, they are on top, aren't they, tonight? They, they, they seem to make ground a lot easier than what the Gerringong Lions do. 
And when they get down in attacking positions, they've had a few chances. I know they're leading 18-6. They can be further in front here, particularly on their left side. They look dangerous every time. Somehow, Gerringon managed to, to keep them out. But uh, I don't know how long that's going to last. So they're really in a hole here at the moment, Gerringon. They can't get up the other end, really, and have a good look at the line. Low scoreboard. Kramer leading 18 points to six with four minutes to go in the first half. As uh, Gerringon, they'd be desperate to get another four point if they can before half time as they work it back within the shadows of the halfway line. They move the ball out of dummy half and Ford gets it away. Opportunity here as they get it into the space. They get back on the inside to Dillon. Doozy, doozy to the right. Chasing hard as Dylan Morris. He's got a bit of pace as Morris. Picked up his dad and his brothers and he's tackled a metre or so out on the goal line. Russell, horrible pass. Back along the ground. Picked up well by Winchester. He throws a long pass across the field. It goes to Collins. Collins got a pass away. Knocked down by Kayama. In fact, it's a rap penalty against Kayama for being outside. So they've got another opportunity here for the Gerringon Knights. Well, Doozy was away for a second, but he's got some pace, hasn't he? Well, you'd expect him to with a name like Morris. I was just talking about Doozy. It was Doozy. He went well. They've taken the tap here. They want to get the six pointer before half time here, the Gerringon side. Would well, you take the tap, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I would. As the ball is brought back oh, now by the They're not Mulder. out of the game, David. They're certainly not out of this game. They've certainly converted try. They've put them right back in the game as the ball is brought back by Collins, and Collins is tackled. He's about six or seven metres out on the goalpost as they work the ball back towards the Kramer end of the field. Literally two, I must admit, as the ball goes away now. Through it goes from Russell to Russell and out of the line. Good tackle. Puts uh, Winchester down about 15 metres out as he gets to his feet. Ten metres in from touchy. That was a good tackle from Ethan Ford. They go back to the short side. Winchester throws a dummy. Winchester to the line. Can he get it down? Can he get it down? No, he can't. He's pushed back into the field of play. He's about two or three metres in from touch. Over on this side of the field, which is the broadcast side of the field, as uh, the Russell brothers have the ball. They put it through the hands. It goes away then to Ford. And Ford got it away. Away to Collins. Collins shoots score. No, he's knocked over. Yes, he has got there. He's knocked over. 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 And he's actually over the line to score another Gerringong try. Yeah, and it was Nathan Ford once again. They've been pressing for the last few minutes up this end of the field, haven't they? The Lions and on that occasion, again, they had a big back line spread out there, but they didn't need to use it because of the class of Nathan Ford. He got the ball, but they again through the tackle, poked his head through, got the one arm out. He then gave it on the outside to the other front row. Both front rowers were scored. The hooker in front row, I should say, have scored twice. That was Cal Collins just on the... On his hip, he gave him the ball. He only had the fullback to get over the top of it. He just steamrolled him, slammed it down next to the post. That's what they needed. With them not much time to go to half time. A short next to the post. You think they'd kick it? It's going to be 18 12. And he's got 38, 37 seconds or so to go before half time. So Taylor will come up and kick this and no doubt convert it. So that'll mean the front row will have scored four points each for Gerringon. Colin Murray Taylor. Your stat, something to embrace. And who brings him? On deck. Oh, no. What a great what a business company. special. Oh, what a company they are. 11 metres out, right in front of the six. In comes Taylor. There's the kick. He converts the try short by his front row partner, Cal Collins. And as a result, it's Kayama leading by 18 points to 12, Sorry, closing in on half-time. And I dare say that we're going to hit this side and down before half-time. Kayama 18, each turn each turn right on half-time, I reckon. There it is, half-time. But there's no point here yet before half-time. That's stupid. Right, at half time, Kayama lead Gerringon by 18 points to 12. Just reminded our while we've got a bit of a break at half time. And the winner of the battle tickets on sale for Jeff Sager, who has been diagnosed with acute lymphoma, 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 that's when you come back from the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes decisions are guesses. 
Well, that's not a decisive decision. That's a getting decision. Well, I would like to compliment. I would like to compliment the referee Carlo on making very decisive decisions, Darrell, yes. in the first half and letting this game flow. And half time, 18 points to 12. Bayana leading Gerringong. We've got some low grade schools coming through in the New South Wales Cup in the second half at North Sydney Oval. The Bears are leading Wyong by 28 points to 10. And in the earlier games, from Georgia Lawara defeated Canterbury 15-14 at Wynn Stadium. While in the Queensland Cup, the North Devils lead town. 27-24 in the second half at Bishop Park. We'll take a break when we return. A look at the first half action. We'll also preview that game from Wing Stadium between St. George and Lawara and the Warriors. But here at Mick Cronin Oval, it's Kayama 18, Gerringong 12. The only true fresh meat people are your local independent butchers like the original Stapleton family meats of Gymea. Stapleton's have been providing the Sutherland Shire with top quality meat and personal service for over 120 years. Their naturally farmed beef is grass-fed, no added hormones or antibiotics. It's cut on premises and the mince is made daily, not pre-packed in plastic um, in major supermarkets. And when you're buying your meat from Stapleton's, you must we'll try their famous chunky we'll beef pies made from only the best ultra lean meat compared to quality price and service at your supermarket and you will shop at stapleton's in guy mia every time stapleton's family meets the true fresh meat people only one location guy mia village open seven days a week no pavement no problem with bf goodrick tires the fun starts where the road ends bf goodrick tires proud partner of the continuous school team visit bf are you proud enough Today's continuous tour team footy fan day is happening right now. You can catch up with Nick from the QGB promotions team at McDonald's Norpera on Norpera Road last year by Stan Airport. He has the QGB on DVD match loaded up with prizes, including tickets to NRL games, DVDs and CDs, QGB merchandise, Big Mac vouchers, plus a $50 gift card. The continuous tour team footy fan day. Don't miss your chance to be a winner. It's on right now at McDonald's Norpera just here by Stan Airport. It's all thanks to Mappers, Izuzu and Sanity on QGB. You can always grab a five dollar lunch deal at Macca's. Right now, pick up a delicious McDonald's burger with small fries and a small coke. All for just five bucks. A little goes a long way at Macca's. Available 10.30am to 2pm for a limited time. Excludes meat delivery. Selling heavy loads can critically affect the safety and... Australian Hammer supplies and it's Kiana leading Gerringong by 18 points to 12. We'll look at the first half action in just a moment with Daryl Dryman and we're bringing in a new innovation this afternoon from uh, Bunker Bob. What is that? that? That'll be coming in very, very shortly, which we'll detail to our listeners. In the meantime, uh, let's go around the grounds for Morgan Chouse and preview the NRL game kicking off in about 15 minutes from now. It's in Georgia Lawara taking on the Warriors at Wynn Stadium in Wollongong. James Willis is updating things for us. James, good afternoon to you. Mark, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to all the listeners. Wynn Stadium looking a treat today for this Round 21 clash, a venue where the Dragons are yet to lose at home this season. Wollongong currently 19 degrees and sunny with light winds. The home side has battled a bit of origin fatigue, having lost three of their last four, including a 36-18 defeat by the Roosters last weekend. Although a win today will see them move to 30 competition points and jump to third place for the time being. For the Warriors, many people aren't convinced they've locked in a finals position just yet. And the West Tigers win over Newcastle last night means they're only one win behind. So a crucial two points on offer for the New Zealand side this afternoon. The uh, Panthers are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors are having to tell his horse with the turn and set his own course in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going to be able to get the ball in the Warriors. The Warriors are going
Well, you know, it's a good project. Uh, the last project. one in particular is good uh, because Nathan Ford, this is for the girls in white. Right. He looks a quality player, doesn't he? He's played in a number of these and he's, he's a hooker, but he's a big, tall hooker. He's more like a back row and he gets the ball and when he runs, he invariably gets through the defensive line. And he's got the amazing ability with a right arm offload to just pop a ball around the corner. Now, we've seen him do it on numerous occasions in the first half. Most occasions it hasn't come off for them, but at the end there, it was a beautiful round the corner ball to Kelly Collins. Got about 10 metres to go and just crashed over the top of the fullback. In between now, I think uh, bazala has been very good for the Kayama Knights. Um, I thought Ethan Ford's been good out wide, and Sutton, the front row, has been fantastic for them. Good game of footy. I'm not convinced Kayama will go on with this. I, I just believe it end up a draw. It's a good game. Well, 18 12 Kayama leading Gerringong. As I alluded to, we're bringing in a new uh, innovation this afternoon and uh, I reckon the NRL may follow suit because we've got Bunker Bob, uh, the vice captain and a more than Bob Fulton. And uh, Bob, we're, we're, asking, we're asking you to, uh, to, to judge the referee from the bunker and to offer some criticism and hopefully one of the Suttons, one of the triplets anyway, will jump on board and do the same thing. Well, they really do too much burning to take this on board. I've had a good look at um, Carol Lee and she's been excellent. We saw her here last year and, and she's really, really kicked in, kicked on from point of view of experience and, and what she has done and what I've, what I've done, Mark, I've, I've actually rated her. There's it, four points I, I sort of look at in, in, to, to rate the referee. One is the rut, she's got a tick, no big no, it's not that right. So two, two, the ten. Yep. All right? Tick. Control. Yep. Tick. He mentioned, as in did, he mentioned about the decision-making processes and they were decisive. I agree with him, right? Thank you. He, that's a positive. Five, game management, perfect. And she's obviously got the respect of the players. Now, over, for, over the first 40, there's, well, there's no doubt I thought she was a 9 out of 10. Yep, right? So now we need Bernard Sutton. What about the lines from Hedger over the He was good. No, he was good. I like his haircut too. What about Greg McCallum on the other side? Oh, he's he's going well. Well. He picked up the forward pass and they were up, look, all the officials are going great. Exactly. And you know what, Bob? And thank you, Bunker Bob. I just had a text message through from Steve Clark, former NRL referee. He says, Caroline Nolan is a very promising up-and-coming referee and one day she'll get her chance in the top grade. So there you go. Okay, well. That's the sort of view Steve Clark has. Looks like we're, under, we're about to get underway. Caroline's about to signal time on which she does. We'll make up that commercial break a little later. Back to David for the second half. And there's the kick off and Winchester takes it. And all of a sudden, Gerringong have got the ball deep inside their own half. And unlike when Gerringong kicked off to start the game, the ball didn't drift over the dead ball line on the full as they work the ball back uh, to Gerringong. And they good strong run here and bring it back as Chandler will play the ball around about uh, what, 15, 25 metres out from his own goal line as they work the ball to Taylor. Taylor's tackled. About 15 shy of the halfway line. Into dummy half, here's Nathan Ford. Which way will he go? He goes back to the right. And they take it ahead through Collins. The try to a right on half line. He's tackled 10 shy of the halfway line. They've come back to the right. No, that just stay to get out. He comes out of dummy half, there's Ford. And he just bangs it straight down the centre of the park. It's taken by Atkins. He starts to bring it back. And uh, what's told before the game to expect some, some really good footwork here from both these fullbacks if they get a chance. They can score tries, but they haven't really been given any open space yet. And I know this fella can score a try if he gets a chance, and that's uh, Dylan Morris, seen him play regularly for the St. George Illawarra under-20s in recent years, as the ball is brought back now by Sutton, and Sutton's tackled, and he's got a pass away. Not the best of pass, because they weren't sure who was going to pick it up, but Matt Morris has picked it up, and he's gone for a scurry on the far side of the field, and he's tackled only 30 metres out now from the, the Gerringong goal line. They go for him dummy half, and they take it ahead, and uh, this was uh, Matt Morris's brother, Dylan, and Dylan's tackled. Only 20 metres out, ball comes to Wake. It goes to Rosella, on it goes to Scott. Scott will play out the back. Here's Atkins with the ball, and he goes one way, he goes the other, he's chopped down on a good tackle, and uh, that was your man Gumley Quine who affected the tackle, Darrell, as it goes to Scott, and there's the crossfield bomb, it's coming down, it's been knocked back by, knocked back by Kayama, then knocked on by Kayama, picked up by Gerringong on the far side of the field, Isaac Russell, and he'll play the ball around about 22, 23 metres out of his own goal line, and a good strong run here from the centre three quarter, Danny Wills, he loses the ball, the ball's knocked on, but the referee's going to rule, it was knocked out of Wills' hands by a Kayama player and as a result when it was the, the we're going to play the knock on both ways but uh, big man Daryl Broman it does mean Gerringong's got a, a, a lucky break perhaps there because they're going to get a strong beat 35 out in their own goal well, I think you got it right too oh, yeah. David I think the ball was stripped and I think it was propelled forward and I think they have got the right call here she is impressive isn't she she was impressive last year Farrelly Nolan she's impressive here today 
It would be very decisive. It's got to be good like that. It's got to be, when you make decisions, you've got to be decisive, David. Well, you can't make a decision undecisively. Well, this is put back now, and they bring the back strongly here through Mulhall, and Mulhall's tackle near the halfway line. As uh, the, uh, the Gerringong line's go on the attack, they trail by six on the low scoreboard. It's 18-6 in favour of Kayama. Russell uploads the ball to Taylor. That was the halfback, Rickson Russell. The ball is going to be played on the halfway line. They're uh, running out of tackles here as uh, Ford goes back the open side. It goes away to Rickson Russell. He got it away to the centre three quarter, taking the ball up now. Gumley Klein, he's got, trying to get away from one, he comes back on the inside he's tackled at 42 metres out he'll play the ball, they go to the short side and from behind Ethan he's, uh, he's actually, uh, Ford is actually knocked over there, it wasn't Ethan Ford it was actually the, the uh, Nathan Ford who plays for uh, Gerringong, Ford goes back now to Mulhall, Mulhall puts a little chip kick over the top, picked up by Atkins Atkins is chased by some Gerringong players and Gerringong defense, they pick him up, they drive him towards the touch line and that's what we're going to see, a scrum feed as a result of that good defence, the kick from the second row, it was beautifully positioned because it, it bounced off when the Atkins had to come for the ball. And gee, the defence followed up well, Darrell. Good kick, good chase. And in the end, they've got another chance here to level the score. Well, they had because of the kick from Corey Mulhall, who I don't think is a noted kicker. Well, based on the way he kicked it, I don't think he's a noted kicker. Anyway, the ball just fell back to him inside the kick it, but it was there enthusiasm defensively there where they grabbed I think it was the fullback and just pushed him into touch and they got the scrum feed there and they won it they're spreading it across their back line now here comes Winchester he gets inside one he, uh, he gets down to within about 10 metres of the goal line he'll play the ball and he plays the ball away now and it comes away to Russell on it goes to his brother Russell now he's uh, taking the ball up strongly is Chandler and Chandler's tackled he's not far away from the goal line he'll play the ball at the western end of the field as the ball comes away and the ball goes through the hands again it comes away to the try scorer at Collins he uploads the ball to Taylor and Taylor is tackled about 2 or 3 metres out in the goal line there's still got a chance here Gerringong as they go back to the left side of the field Roberts has it Roberts gets it away. Mulhall for the loss. Mulhall drives it underneath the left and scores a try. It's 18 16. Pick the count. Great try, Rod. And a great hole running there from Mulhall. Corey Mulhall, who put the kick in to get that set of six back for the uh, for the Gerringong side. But on that occasion, he just got the ball. He knew what he wanted to do. He just put head down and bum up. And he said, No one's going to stop me. And he went through a small gap with a beautiful ball on the outside. I think it was given by Joel Roberts. It was a nice ball. He ran into a bit of space, and then he had the fullback and I think the winger coming in to try and stop him, but he just overpowered them over the top of them and scores uh, what 15 metres to the, the left side of the post. The tough, well, it's not a tough kick, but it's not an easy kick either. They do well to knock this over, Jake Taylor, but that's a great try to Jerry Gorn. So that's good back-to-back tries to put them in with a chance here of drawing level. And now we've got Taylor again with the opportunity. So at the moment we've had the tries scored by the prop, the second row of the hooker, and the other prop has kicked all the goals. Yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing little score sheet. And sure is, Davey. And we often see you know, wingers scoring tries and centres and full-backs, guards. That's the, it's the front row. Here's Taylor. He's about, uh, what, 15 metres in from touch. He's taken about 20 metres back. He's kicked well today, hasn't he? And we're looking into the sun now. And in he comes, and there's the kick. And off the boot, I think it looks pretty good, but it's not good enough. And as a result, it's no goal, and the score remains 8 and 16. Kayana was going to And as you said, uh, with a, a little bit of ball, 18, uh, this might be get back into the game, and they're well, well and truly back in it now. Well, I mean, just their position on the table indicates that they're pretty evenly matched sides, aren't they? They're both on 20 points, and there's not much difference between their four and against either. So, um, you know, it's pretty clear, under normal circumstances, you're going to have a decent battle here. Here's a good kick-off. This could bounce anywhere. It does bounce anywhere. It bounces high, and luckily for uh, the Gerringong line, it was Isaac Russell who took an awkward bounce well before he was confronted by the defence, and they worked the ball back towards the uh, uh, 25, 22, 23 metre mark now, right underneath the goalpost at their end of the field penalty, holding down. See, that was a that was a decision that had to be made because you just got the feeling there was a little hole down there, and Rickson Russell is coming up to take the kick for touch, and he kicks to the far side. And as a result, over on that northern side of the ground, we're going to see Gerringong come back with the ball. We've had a fair bit of possession in this second half, so their chance to take the lead is right here. They led early. What about the view from here, David, where we are, whatever side we're on? I mean, the beautiful on the mountains. northern side. Huh? OK, well, on the northern side, there's beautiful mountains. It's just magnificent here. Look, there's a line walking past us. Well, right? Is it the paddle pop line? It looks like the paddle pop line. If it was, you'd be down there getting some. Ball brought back by Taylor. You love your paddle pop. I do love a paddle pop. 
Ball is brought back again by, as I said, Taylor goes away to Ford. It goes to Russell in turn to Roberts, and Roberts offloads the ball to Mulhall, and Mulhall is tackled. He's about 20, 25 metres out on the goal line at uh, Kiama's end of the field. As Ford darts into dummy half, that's Nathan Ford. As the, the Russell brothers in combination get the ball, and then there was a little set-up uh, move there involving Chandler, and Chandler went one way, the ball went the other, knocked on, and Kiama come up with the ball. And uh, they've uh, well, they dodged the bullet. What a monster! Oh, 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 shit here! And racing away, Rickson Russell. He's not far away. He's tackled. He's only about five or six metres out from the goal line. They get up and play the ball. The ball comes away, picking the ball up as Roberts. Roberts going half of the line. He's not far away. He's tackled right next to the goalpost. Penalty against Kyle for being outside. Now, do they take the kick here to level it up, or do they take the tap? I take the tap here. They're on fire at the moment. They've started the second half really well. They look dangerous. I'd take the tap here, I think they will. Well, yeah, well Ford's got the ball, he's not the goal kicker, so... Well, that tells me they're going to take the tap, though. Ball comes to Collins, and Collins goes straight in, into the defensive line, he goes. He's not far away from the bumper bar, which is uh, surrounding the goalpost at that western end of the field, and going from dummy half, Nathan Ford. Here's Mulhall having another play. Yeah! I think he's there, I think he's there, I think he's there, I'm on the lead to the first and shorty second try. Well, hold up. Referee says no hold up. Wow, wouldn't be much in that, but the referee not only was decisive in making the decision, was yes. right there, perfectly positioned. Got the sun behind her, so it didn't get in her eyes. Good decision. Didn't get in a position where she was affected by the sun. That's not a bad well, thing. Well, it's affecting it. us, Saviour. Right in my eyes, the sun. Ball goes back now across it, comes down to Taylor, and Taylor tries to work his way over the big prop board who kicks the goal for Gerringong. It's played to Ford, open side, they come again, the ball has got away, and from behind, gee, that's a good tackle. And it was made by Bazola, who managed to come across and clean Nathan Ford up, about five metres out in the goal line. The ball goes back, and Russell has it. That's uh, Rickson Russell, back on the inside. There's a horrible kick pass, but somehow found Rickson Russell again. So They've got a chance here, they've got a chance here, they're going for the line, and in the end the ball is loose on the ground, picked up by Mulhall, Mulhall gets it out, back across the line, loose it out, and Mulhall scores another goal for Jerry Gill, the ball hit the ground, Mulhall picks it up, they wrapped around each other, and all of a sudden Phillips, the great winner, came racing into a screaming gap and scores the tie that puts it in front. The ball is, I'm glad you described that because I didn't see it. It was unbelievable. You know they said there was an ugly flick pass, but it ended up creating the try. It, just, it was one of those ones where he wasn't even looking. He just slipped it out the back. Fortunately for Jerry Gong, it went to one of their players, and then they went down, the, down their left side where we our vision is a bit... Uh, well, well, you, you can't, can't see it. Well, you, can't, it. you can't see it. You can't see it. You did, you did really well because you can see through walls. You're Superman, baby. Great try. Kick to come. They're going to be in, well, they're in front now. And of course, they're looking into the sun as well. Who scored that try, Davey? That try was scored, in my opinion, by Harry Phillips, the, lead, the winger, the number five. Well right done, Harry. They lead, they lead 20 points to 18, but the kick for Taylor is just to the left of the uprights. Opportunity to extend the lead here to 22 points to 18 after they were behind 18-6 in the shadows of half-time, Jaron Guy. And as uh, Bob Fulton and Darren Brayman suggested at half-time... Please don't call me Darren. Did I call you Darren? I think you did. Did I? Sorry. Okay. In comes Taylor. And that's, he saved that, but he managed to get it through. He managed to get it through for two points. I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't take it through. All right, Billy. Um, you yeah, okay, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> He's in the boat. He's got yeah. his earmuffs on. So I was about to say what mm. Bob Fulton and Daryl Broman said at half time. If they get a bit of possession, Jaron Gong, they go right in this game. Try to Jaron Gong's Harry Phillips. Confirmed by Jake Taylor. Taylor. Two, 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 the lines now take the lead. 22 points to 18. And that was probably. Well, let's say we've had 10 minutes of the second half. That was about 12 minutes ago. So, it's been a pretty good comeback from them. 20, I'm just having a look. 29 minutes to go in the game. And it's Gerringon leading by 22 points to 18 as they move the ball to the right side again, Gerringon. And I'm just wondering if the... Uh, well, a few changes will come at some stage, you'd reckon, in this second half. It's a warmish day down here. In fact, it's a beautiful day. Couldn't get much better than this at this time of the year, could you? And no. Winchester gets the ball. He got away from one. He gets away from two. Gee, there's a lot of attempts at one-on-one strips in this game. And there have been a few successful ones. And there was one in the lead-up of that try that probably turned the game a little bit, I think it's fair to say. As Ford has the ball, that's Nathan Ford. He uploads the ball, take it ahead of Chandler. And Chandler's going to play the ball for Gerringong up towards the halfway line. Plays the ball back out the back. It goes. It comes across the end of the halfback. And that's uh, Rickson Russell. And he's tackled around about 30-odd metres out of the goal line. Over on the far side of the park. We come back to the broadcast side. And it goes away to Ford. And Nathan Ford puts it up. It's high in the air. Dylan Moore's coming to the ball. 
lost it. Superbly defended, lost it. He lost it behind him. I thought he had it. And then there's a big one. might have come off one of the uh, uh, Gerringong players, David. And there it is. The handover. He actually was about to take it, I think. And I think you'll find one of the Gerringong players jumped over the top of him and, and knocked the ball on. So it saved him the pain of having to take the ball in the end. It saved him the pain. They still ran into him. <laughs> yeah, but... But at least they've got the ball. But he, but he committed himself. Yeah, he did underneath it to catch it on the floor. He didn't just let it bounce, which is often what we see happen. And that could have had uh, disastrous consequences for Kayama, who've got the ball after a good run from their number nine, Martin. The ball goes back to the centre of the park. And this looks like the lock forward. That's because it is. And bring it up as Toby <laughs> knows, and he's tackled on the halfway line. He'll play the ball to Martin. They send it back now to Thistlequake. And he's tackled up over the halfway line, about 45 metres out. He'll play it to Martin. They'll go back to the left. No, they don't. They go back to the right. And coming hard onto the ball in is Morris. And uh, this is Matt Morris. He's tackled about 35 metres out. Last tackle coming up. Martin will come back with the right side of the field, it goes to Scott, a little chip over the top, it should be caught on the full by Winchester, it is, he's tackled 15 out from his goal line, and about 8 metres in from touch on this western side of the field as the ball goes across to, to uh, the winger who scored the try, Harry Phillips, and he's tackled about 20 out from his own goal post, as they'll get up and play the ball at the eastern end of the field, and they go for a scurrying run out of dummy half, and they're going to play the ball back towards the 30 metre line, eventually they'll play it, with a little push and shove, and finally getting in at dummy half, and uh, going for a little gallop there it was uh, Gumley Pine. He plays the ball, and uh, Russell gets the ball. And the ball comes back to the try scorer and Phillips. And this has been a good back set here from Jaron Gong. They've really used all of their backs to go for a run here to take a bit of pressure off the forwards on this hot day. Rux, Russell gets the ball. Rickson Russell. He kicks it towards the touch line on the southern side of the field. Picked up by Dylan Morris. Watch out! This place got pace. And he started to get away from them. And came down in the witch's hat way just for a moment, Jaron Gong. And it looked as if he might go on one of those witch's hat drills. But they, then they straightened the line up and threw the manager off the path of Morris to try and go any further than the halfway line. Well, they need, they need to get the big front row back into the game. I haven't seen much of him in the second half. Sutton, that's a nice ball there. The big Sutton was carving them up in the first half. I don't think he's had a touch in the second half. And they go behind him again as the ball goes across the park now. And quickly it goes through the hands of the captain. Uh, the captain... Uh, across on the far side of the field and left here in pool. The ball goes back to this side now. It comes to Martin, the broadcast side. And the card onto the ball, it's a horrible pass. It's a horrible pass. Not a great pass. You give a bloke a rap and what happens? No, the pass was half behind him. And I got the feeling the halfback in running the ball in the hooker. They were going to go out the back, Darrell was running with it. They played the second man, played yeah. the front man. And in the end, they played one and a half. Yeah, it was no good. The pass to Nose was poor. Nose would have had to be a genius to take that. He, he tried to catch with one hand just as he was getting the ball. There was a defender up in his face, so he, he had a little bow peep, but the pass was poor. It needed to hit him on the chest, and it hit him on the chest. It was a chance to take it, but I didn't. So, again, they're, they're now doing exactly what Gerringong were doing in the first half, David. They're panicking a little bit, and they're just not getting their speed through their sets. Here comes uh, Gerringong, they lead after trailing 18 points to 6, taking the ball up now is Doozy, and he's tackled about 22 metres out, Gerringong leads 22 to 18 on the low scoreboard, as the ball comes back to the left side of the field and it's brought away and bring it up as Collins, he scored the, the vital try they needed just before half time, he'll play the ball, they go back to the left again, Mulhall who scored a good try to open proceedings here in the second half, he's almost through the line, good tackle in the end, Collier was one of those, I should say Whittaker was one of those heavily involved in the tackle, they go back to the right, here's Taylor, Taylor's tackle on the halfway line, as uh, they run out of tackles here, Gerringong, who's going to put the kick in, the kick actually comes from the captain, Nathan Ford, it's into no man's land, but can quickly here, the ball at the end is dragged out of the air by Kayama, and a little flip pass back on the inside, but it's knocked on, it's knocked on, it's knocked on by Kayama, and it's going to be a scrum feed to Gerringong. He's uh, lucky to get away with that, Gerringong, because the ball was, as you said, it was a really dangerous kick then, it just bounced in no man's land, footland, fortunately, for the uh, Kayama Knights, they picked it up and then started streaking downfield, then did a flick pass, which wasn't required, and the referee has really been knocked on by one of Kayama Knight's players. So once again, a couple of decisions starting to go their way here, Gerringong. Gerringong leading 22-18 on the low scoreboard as we go round the grounds. Here's James Willis. Seven minutes gone, first half in stadium. Dragons and Warriors in the air. As they bring the ball back and uh, finally we've got uh, Jacob Rain out there who's uh, taking the ball up. Jeez, it's good to do it around the grounds like that with someone at the ground. I remember the old days when that used to happen? Well, guess who was here today? Guess anymore. who is here today? Who? who was the most famous around the grounds man from the continuous call team? Don Mosley! And Don's here today. Great oh, to see him. What a man. <laughs> He's here. 
and uh, he came up and said hello earlier. He's retired, gonna... you know. Just an update on Don Mosley. I just went down to the canteen area. He will not be appearing on air this afternoon. No, no match having lunch with him next Thursday, believe it or not, Marky Mark. Well, well he's going to catch up with us a bit later in the day. The Velvet Fog's getting sucked into the two he's new, fellas. Oh, yeah, well, here yeah. they come as uh, Rain gets into dummy half and they go back to the right side. And uh, running hard on the ball, Richard Russell, he gets it away to his brother. Now it goes across uh, as the ball comes away from Chandler. Back it goes in to Russell through the hands of Whittaker and Russell going hard. This is Isaac Russell and his tackle not far away from the goal line. They're on the attack again here, Jiren going. They're closing in and going to a spare the lead as the ball comes away. A long pass out wide. They go a little grubber kick into the in goal area and it's loose on the ground and Kayama are going to come up with it I think you'll find it is, yeah I think they have I can't see either but just judging by the way the referee's running back here they've got the ball Kayama that's exactly what I looked at too just see, that's what we do David we do those sorts of things you know the experience Sutton brings it back now for Kayama the big front row and he's tackled about 30 metres out from his own goal post it's 22 to 18 that's on the low scoreboard and a kick now and to put in the kick in is Bazola he's looking for a 40-20 and uh, it's out on the full it's out on the full I don't think it crossed the touch line inside the 20 anyway because I think it's about the 30 metre line we're on and that's about where it went into touch so that's another mistake by Kayama and that gives yeah. uh, Gerangong huge field position well, it's just, they're doing exactly what Derringon did in the first half, David. They're just coming apart at the seams here. Yeah, they're just not completing sets. They're not kicking properly. They're making mistakes before when uh, Derringon took that kick up and they got the ball and looked like streaking away. There was a flick pass that was knocked off. So it was a turnover immediately. So Derringon have had all the ball here in the second half and they've done well. They've scored a couple of tries. And they've got the ball again here, Jaron Gong, and it's Rain who goes back to the left to Russell and he gets it away forward. Taking it ahead, Nathan Ford, he's tackled. He's tackled about 20 metres out on the goal line. He's about 15 in from touch. And which way will they go? Rain goes back to the open side. And uh, it's Rickson Russell through the hands to Taylor. Taylor got it away on the outside. Gee, that was thank you very much. Ward 10 of Wollongong Hospital. That pass. Uh, anyway, they did well. They caught the ball. Rain goes back to the left and he sends it away. No, he doesn't. He throws the dummy. He goes on his own. He's tackled about five or six metres out on the goalpost at the western end of the field. They'll play the ball again. And Ricks and Russell, they go back to Roberts. And Roberts charges the line. He sends it back on the inside. I thought for a the moment there was going to be an intersect. There's an opportunity here. Isaac Russell going to the left. Isaac Russell goes back for a yeah, it was one of those ones, President David, it went to the left, then to the right, and it's exactly what we see in the NRL. Sometimes the pass that misses its mark, it just bounces along the ground, and it ends up being a beauty, and on that occasion, that's exactly what happened. There was a, oh, you'd have to say, a poor pass from one of the Jerry Gong players, it just bounced along there, it ended up bounced up the, he just said Russell, I didn't know. Isaac Russell's the one that picked it up. He, he picked it up through a dummy and darted over and slams it down. Five metres to the right of the goalpost. I think this would be a six-pointer. They've now got a pretty decent lead. They were down 18-6. They're going to lead 28-18 here. Well, they should do because he's right next to the six here is uh, big Jake Taylor. And uh, where are we going? We've got 11, 10, 9, 8, 6, 5. So the seven's got to score at some stage. Otherwise, this program's way out of field. Yeah. What about the 12? Uh, well, we can go back, but I'm just saying the 11, the 10, the 9, the 8, the 6, and the 5 are still, so the 7 mm. hasn't scored yet. How are we going to go with Kayama, though? Do we go the 3, the 4, yeah, and the 12? The 3, 4, the 12. <laughs> and there's the kick from Taylor, converts the try scored by Isaac Russell, and all of a sudden, as Dale pointed out on the low scoreboard, Jerringon 28, Luke Kayama 18, and if I lean full far enough, yeah. I can tell you that there's 19 minutes still to go in the game. Mate, yeah. mind you some appearing when taking try effective, David, at the races. So you get the first two numbers, so you say it was eight and six, yeah. and it's say the 11 ran third, that's how it worked out. Eight and six, add that up, what do you get? Four Take away three, 11, there's your trifecta. Why would you take away third? Because you don't get third if you don't take away three. Right. Try for Gerringong's Isaac Russell, converted by Jake Taylor. <laughs> yeah. So we'll do it again. So let's say it's four wins and seven runs second. Four what do you think? And let's say eight run third. How do you do it? Four and seven's eleven. <laughs> minus, <laughs> minus three. Eight. Eight. Hey, that's how it works. That's the theory. Oh, <laughs> anyway, Graham has got the ball back here after a Jerangon mistake. That's sick with the footy. Ethan Ford go goes for Geller. He got away from one, got away from two. He's still going as Ethan Ford. Good run here. Got a good try in the first half. So here's Kuyama's chance to hit back here. And gee, they were hurling for a penalty. It wasn't forthcoming. Sutton charges this big fella. He's got to the line, but the defence holds him up. 
He's over the in, over the goal line, but he couldn't get the ground. I reckon that's his first touch. No, he did one down here. He, okay, I reckon that's his second touch. He made a good bust coming out of his own end when they needed a big run not long ago. Okay. They're going to play the ball 10 metres out as Martin goes back the open side. The ball comes through the hands and away it goes to the lock forward, taking it up as Nobes. And Nobes is tackled. He's about 8 metres out from the Gerringong line. They'll play the ball about 20 metres in from the touch line. Penalty. Holding on. Hand on the ball, says the referee. That was a decisive decision. It goes well, doesn't she? I, I like her. She, she's very good at this. She, she handles it well. I think all the decision making today has been very decisive. And Brown takes it ahead. And a good run by Brown. He's dragged into the end goal area by the Gerringong players. So uh, he's forced to go back 10 metres out to play the ball. We need a try here, desperately need a try. Martin, the dummy half, he goes back to the left side. The pass is not a great pass, but now it goes to Atkins. Atkins got it away, and the ball is uh, still with Ethan Ford, who's tackled it. A good tackle, gee, hit the deck hard. Martin fires the pass back, and here comes Sutton again, and Sutton takes it ahead. He loses the ball, was it stripped? We'll wait to see what the referee says. The ball is towed through. It finishes up in the hands of Gerringong, but the referee's going to rule a knock on if you were to knock one against Tiamma, I would have thought uh, I thought it was knocked out of his hands. I think, you know, she, she, hasn't, she wasn't in a great position to see it, David. He had, a, he had his back turned to the goal line where, where the referee was, and he was trying to offload. Now, I'm pretty sure there was a hand came in from, a, from one of the uh, Gerringong players and knocked the ball out, but she didn't see it that way. That's fair enough. So what, Bunker Bob can't add anything to it? I don't know where he is, but he's gone home. <laughs> what a dude. Where is he? He's just going to inspect the interactive studio at the pub to make sure the bunker and all that sort of stuff is under control. Yeah, there's an injury on the far side. Now, I reckon this will be, is it Ethan Ford who might be down? When he when he took that ball to the line a moment ago, by the G, he hit the deck hard. Let's go, let's, go the, let's go around the ground at Wollongong, the venue, and St George Illawarra playing the Warriors, and the man to give us all the scores is James Willis. David, ten and a half down, Dragons and Warriors, nil all, but bad news to Dragons fans, Paul Vaughan has just limped off the field with what appears to be a serious leg injury. That is bad news. That is bad news. David Lift. No. Come on. Lift. Right. Concentrate on this guy. Don't worry about the dragon. Uh, the, this Ford over here. Is the, not, did he lose a contact lens or something? Why no, has well, he put him in his knee? No, no, no. He's fixing up. No, he won't have. He won't have broken his nose, didn't he? Yeah, he's got a blood nose or whatever, but he, he, you saw his head hit the dance deck awkwardly. And uh, there's uh, Gerringong, the feeling for a high shot as they take, they take the strum and they go to the short side. They're playing the ball out towards their own 20 and flying out of the line, she's in the highest shot. A good tackle down below, he really went to go in there and hurt them. He did exactly that for halfback. He's a good player, Zola. Zola, what's his name? Zola, yeah. Fuzzy. Fuzzy <laughs> Zola. Well, See, that was a funny one, I thought. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is real name, Fuzzy. Yeah. My yeah. nickname. Yeah. He was just always known as Fuzzy, so I presume it was his name. Ball brought back by Collins. He's tackled 32 out from his own goal line. On a bright, sunny afternoon here in Gerringong, Taylor takes it ahead. And he's tackled about nine short of the halfway line. Gerringong with the ball. They lead by 28 points to 18 on the low scoreboard. The ball will go back to the left, and away it goes. It goes to Russell. He gets those quick hands away to Roberts. Roberts gets on there. In fact, there's a forward pass in there. As Gumley Klein thought he was on his way. Yeah, I think it was a forward pass. In fact, I think there could have been two or three of them there. They're, they're expecting a kick, and in the end, they decided to pass the ball, and all the players had taken off to chase the kick, and they're all in front, and they decided to throw the ball anyway. You've got to ride again, the referee. Yeah, there's still a bit of an appeal here. There's got to be a penalty. Good there on. has to be a penalty. I mean, Richard Russell was just yelling and yelling and yelling at the referee, but he was standing next to the man who was meant to be the the. the uh, the dummy half. He, he, he was blatantly offside, making no attempt to get onside and giving the ref a goal ball. Yeah, well, there's their, there's their opportunity. They're only 20 metres out here, Kayama. They haven't scored in the second half. They need to do something here, David. Well, let's see what they can do as the ball goes across and hard onto the ball of Sutton. And he's tackled about 12 metres out. Where's Mazzola? He's normally involved. Martin will be in at dummy half. They'll go back to the left side. No, they don't. They come back to the right. The ball goes to Scott. Short ball away to the man who scored one of the first tries, Cornell. He's tackled not far away. He'll play the ball to Scott. They go back the open side to Martin. Bozella will be across here somewhere. He's got the ball now. He goes for a gallop back on the inside. He beats one. He beats two. He's still going the half back. He's tackled a few metres out from the goalpost. At uh, Gerringong's end of the field. They'll play the ball to Martin. They go back to the left to Scott. And Scott got it away. Gee, that's a good tackle. 
as uh, the, the Kaima side brought it ahead and they took it ahead strongly out there on that side of the field through pool and now a horrible, horrible muck up now by Kaima sees Roberts finish up with the ball by Gerringong and the, the, and the yeah. look and the, and, and the scream from Matt Morris over here on the wing he put his hands to his head and said what are we doing? Well, they put the kick in there. The kick wasn't good. I don't think it was the last second. No. You know, I'm not even sure if the outside backs were aware what was going on there from Kayama. It was, again, a poor play on, the, on late in the tackle count. But you've got to give a wrap here to the Jerry Gold defence on their line. Their defence on their right side on the line has been phenomenal. They've stopped players in their tracks. Here they come again, Jaron Gong leading 28 points to 18. And that's uh, on the low scoreboard as the ball is fed away now to Nathan Ford. And he goes straight, he goes hard. He's still taking a bit of uh, bringing down. He tackles short short of the halfway line. Last tackle. They'll go back. No, they don't. They go to Rain at dummy half. And a good kick too. He found the, he found the ground between the winger and the fullback. But Dylan Morris did well. He scurried back and helped his fullback out. He's lost the ball here. Is it a strip? Racing away now. There's a uh, Russell. 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 Back away. You've got to the number seven you are, to the you it's, are a genius. He's a virgin down here at Gerringong. Never been here before. And he has now called it brilliantly. He said to me before the game, you know what, big man? I think 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We'll score some points. But 12 hasn't scored yet. So you could still be a dummy. <laughs> it's 32 points to 18. That's with a kick to come on the low scoreboard. Ah, dear, Ricks and Russell. How are you enjoying your time down here, Jaring Gun? Oh, I'm enjoying it so far. I'll enjoy the next three hours more, sir. From when I'm gone. Take the 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Christine, expect a call about 1 a.m. I don't think so. <laughs> Christine, I'm just down here at the hotel. I've got a few of my friends here. I bumped into Stumpy Stevens down here. What a great man. Be down here, really. I don't know if you know it is. <laughs> I, I have met a couple of locals, David, and looking forward to having a beer with the great Percy. <laughs> Hope they shout something. I'm not sure where something is these days. Probably a gambler. Yeah. He's, a, he's an icon around gambler. Something. Well, he loves prawns. <laughs> I don't know whether he does or not. Good football. In comes Taylor. There's the kick. Converts the try. And it's 34 points to 18. Gerringong leading Kayama. And uh, what have we got to go here? 12 minutes to go in the game. So let's go around the ground and let's go a little muscle. bit further north to Willem going. Uh, uh, here's Taylor. James Willis. 16 going Jeremy first half, Dragons and Warriors in the That sounds like a tight game, Davies. Nil all. Nil all, wouldn't it? What are we going to do here, Diana? Well, they tried the kick kick off. Off. short kick-off. And luckily for uh, Gerringong, they got behind the ball, the man on the far side. And he tried to get around the ground and they got behind the ball, the man on the far side. It's bringing the ball back. It was Chandler who got the ball, but he turned his body as the ball hit him. So when it glanced off, he it went backwards to a teammate who said, all right, I've got you covered. And as a result, they finished up the possession. It was a, it was a bouncing ball. It was always going to be difficult to get hold of as they bring the ball back now to Veringong Lions and they lead. And they lead pretty well now. It's a trailing 18-6. Uh, it means now they've scored the last 28 points in the game. Uh, they lead 34 points to 18. And you think of the, uh, well, you never ever think like that in, in these sort of games because if anyone could score three tries in the twinkling as the ball is brought back by Taylor, but gee, they had so much possession in the second half, they've uh, certainly taken the stranglehold of the game as Rickson Russell puts it high in the air. Atkins comes to the ball, he takes it. Gee, I'd love to see this kid get a bit of space. If, uh, I've been told if he gets into space, watch out, but he hasn't told been... you that. He's been, he's been a little snoop dog. Oh, yeah, a couple of fellas that know, oh, certainly know a little bit about the gate. That ball goes back to Matt Morris. Matt Morris has taken a solid tackle over towards the far side of the field as uh, the ball is brought back. We're on the broadcast side of the field, obviously, because that's where we're broadcasting from. Yes. The ball comes back to the 30 metre line. Open side, they come on, a little knock on. A little knock on. He's had a big game, this fella, I reckon, the... the, the the little dummy half, Daniel Martin, as he, he was thinking about where he was going, but didn't uh, didn't keep his eye on the ball, and Gerringong get another opportunity now to go on the attack. They're going to get possession. They're going to get it 40 out from Kiyama's line, 20 in from touch over on that northern side of the field. And gee, they score here, Darrell, you'd say that's curtain, wouldn't oh, you? I'm pretty sure it's all over anyway, David. I, I want to be on them anyway. They look the better side. The other, Kiyama, they look pretty dispirited now, don't they? they, they just, as once again, they just can't get through a sec. They can't put any pressure on the on the Gerringong Lions at the moment, and now the Gerringong Lions are just taking their time in. They're in no hurry to, to pack this scrum. The clock keeps ticking. 
I think we're going to run out and take over to expect there's more points in this side. We want number 12 to score, Judd Collier. As Brent brings the ball back now from Jaron Gong. Is he out there? Uh, I'll have a look. I haven't thing. seen Judd. No, I haven't seen him at all. Why not be playing? I don't think I've seen him. If he is out there, he hasn't made, he hasn't made an impact. The ball is going to be played. <laughs> and uh, taking the ball up now is the 16. Now, I've got that here somewhere. Right. And uh, that's uh, Ewan McCarroll, is it? Ewan McCarroll has got the ball. They have to give me the... These are the other two replacements who played in the reserve grade game, and he's one of them. The ball is played now by Chandler. They come back and now to Winchester, and Winchester tries to scurry in behind them. He's almost away. He's not far away as Winchester. He plays the ball. Rain from dummy half. He sends it back, and here he comes again. Rickson. Rickson tackles, and this is the, the 5 8 Rickson Russell, I should say, as he plays the ball. Back it goes to the right. The ball is a little grubber kick into the in goal area. It's loose in the in goal area. In the end, it goes over the dead ball line, but it was propelled over the dead ball line by Clam as fullback and as a result it's a line dropout and uh, Darren Gong will get the ball back. I think I called him Rickson then. I meant Rickson. Well, it, it's right. Well, there's Isaac and Rickson. Yeah, but it's, I called him Rickson instead of Rickson Russell. But I okay. know what I meant. But it's a bit of a tongue twister. Rickson Russell? Yeah. Well, anyway. I'm entitled to get one of them. Yeah, well, no, you're not entitled. You, you've done a wonderful job today, David. Can we get David three cheers, everyone here for granted? It's a perfect. Collins yep. plays the ball and the ball comes away and here's Wink no, Russell. He offloads the ball to Taylor <laughs> and Taylor's tackled. And he's tackled yep. deep inside the deep inside Kayama's territory. He'll play the ball in front of the goalpost. Rain goes back to the left and Rain decides to have a scurry on his own. He's taken. Good defence from Kayama. They're about 10 metres out on the goal line. They'll play the ball and it's Rickson Russell who darts into dummy half. He goes back to the right. It goes to Winchester. Winchester holds the ball in two hands. Throws a dummy. Drips the cross field. He looks for a runner. He finds it on the outside. This is Wed. Wed got away from one, and Wed is taken. He's not far away. Isaac Russell darts into dummy half. He decides to go back to the left. It goes to Rickson Russell. He looks for Collins, and Collins is hard onto the ball. He's tackled, not far away. He's not far away from scoring at all. Is it played now? Isaac Russell, Rickson Russell. He's going for the little chip bomb, and the chip bomb is a belief. He says, "Oh, and this is Cameron Cornell. He's swimming away again. They're chasing over the halfway, over the forty, over the twenty. He scored their opening try." Kayama's open try and he's raced away to work to fortuitously score a try late in the game. It was a kick that went horribly wrong back beautifully into his hands. He scores the try that makes it 34 22 with a kick to come from under the six. Well, again, he's run a long way to score a try. I think the kick was charged down. I think it was Russell just trying, trying to put a little chip over the top to his winger. I think it may have been charged down by one of the Kayama players and it landed straight in the hands of Cameron Cornell. Now he has run. 70 metres in one try and probably 80 metres or 90 metres for his second try. I think if you want the ball to go into someone's hands, he's got to run a decent distance. He's the man because he's got great pace. No one made any ground on him and he scored that easily. Great try there for Kayama. Have they got time to go? And look at my man Luke. How much time to go in this great game? Six minutes, David. We can see a million tries in that time. Six or eight. I don't know. Here comes uh, the halfback and uh, Mazzola converts the try scored by, Cor by uh, Cornell and as a result it is 34-24 and uh, that's uh, with about eight minutes to go I think. We'll get that clock checked in just a moment. 34-24. Second try by Cameron Cornell and round it was round converted by Cameron Mazzola. Jaron Gold 34. Two dragons here. The Knights are now 24. As we see Jaron Gold bring the ball back to the halfway line and it's going to be Taylor who's going to get us underway again. Lift David, it's only two points. What? Oh, there he is. And if Taylor kicks us off, and there's the kick off deep inside Kayama's territory. See if they sure another converted try here, Kayama. That'll put the uh, uh, the, the cat proverbially amongst the, uh, the Gerringong pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Gerringong pigeon's any different than the other ones? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> Well, he came from the bunker, he's in the wall, I heard something come from the wall, he said they can't fly. <laughs> Jaron Gong uh, at the moment tackling well, they bring the ball back as Whittaker, and he's tackled the Kayama second row. Gee, that could have been a penalty as they were really trying to get something out of their own line. Sutton, he sends the ball across field and Bazola gets the ball. He offloaded the ball in the centre of the field as they work it back within the, about eight or nine metres of the halfway line. Martin scurries out of dummy half, a long cutout ball, but the ball's been dropped, and uh, coming up with the ball is Jaron Gong. And Jerengong are going to get a strum feed after they tried to valiantly move the ball to the left timer in the hope they could score something. And uh, in Jerengong, what's that? Hey, not pigeons, they are crows. Oh, of course they are. 
Tell us that joke, baby. Yeah, well, I'm just getting a, a message here. Of course, down down here, they don't have pigeons, they have crows. Oh, yeah. And there's plenty of them. Yeah, there is. Mick Cronin. Well, I got you. No, oh no. You didn't find crow, right? Did you? Oh, you knew that, did you? Yeah, no. I'm sorry, Dave. Yeah, I did. Very good. Mm -hmm. Ball has played, Gerringong now with a great chance to uh, perhaps seal the victory because they've got fantastic field position here as Gumley Klein takes the ball ahead. He's tackled about uh, a few metres inside the opposition's half. Rain Nutton goes for a scurry out of dummy half and he's going to play the ball. And when you can see. Would he be Mitchell's brother? I'm not sure. Is there many Rain's about? No, and, the, and they just felt the same. And he is playing at hooker mm. as the ball is taken ahead by Colin. A lot of coincidences there. And it is his brother. You know what the plural of coincidences is? Coincidence. Ball played. Here they go. Rain gets the ball away and it comes away on this side of the field. And Mulhall and he's tackled. And he's tackled around about 20 metres out. This is the uh, the broadcast side, the southern side. Ball played to Rain. Back to the left to Winchester. Winchester dodges and wheezes and looks for a runner back on the inside. He finds Russell. In turn, he finds his uh, brother. And uh, they take it ahead. Rickson went back to Isaac. And they're playing the ball close to the goal line. Last tackle coming up for Gerringong. Time running out for Kayama as the ball goes back to the right then. And Winchester puts a grubbing kick in. It'll go touch in goal, he gets on the far side of the field starts to roll down the hill and down the hill it goes into the car park and as a result it's a seven tackle set to Kayama uh, but they need to score and they need to score in a hurry, it's 34-24 on the low scoreboard three minutes to go in the game, Gerringong will lead the Kayama Knights David, I'm not sure if there's time I and mean, they're not playing well enough, they made once again, just a lot of errors here now they're in a situation where they need to throw the ball about desperately, they probably should have got a penalty there, they were held down for extended period but they didn't get it but there's a great off but not gone I mean again another error this time it was Morris who was about to steam through a gap ball was popped back by the big front row who'd been wrapping today Luke Sutton but the ball was not gone so once again they've got the ball here Gering going in a great attacking position ball's going to be played by Taylor he gets it away now to Mulhall on it goes in and uh, away through the hands it comes across to this fellow with the, the double barrel name Gunley Klein he's tackled over on this side of the field the southern side he gets up and See, he looks to kill. Uh, his opposite number, Cornell, wouldn't be out there. Something happened in that tackle he wasn't happy with. Winchester takes the head. He uploads the ball. Russell goes for a run. Ricks and Russell, this is. He darts one way, then darts back the other. He runs out of options to the right. He comes back down the centre, and uh, he tackles around about 15 metres out. And the referee is going to have come up with something here because the touchy, the touchy is coming on, which I would suggest might be for a high shot. The reaction from Gerringong is there was something happened in the tackle that was under the ward, and now it's going to be something that happened over on this side of the field before uh, we, we just saw. Well, might have been you said when that bloke looked at the other bloke funny. Well, and what's been called out here is uh, young Morris. I think it's Matt Morris being called out, isn't it? One of them might be Dylan. Mm. Uh, it's going to be a penalty. From the sounds of things, the touchy's giving the report, so it should be a penalty to, uh, to Gerringong. And I dare say it's uh, around about two minutes on the clock. Let's have a look again. They'll have a shot. It would have a shot at goal here and just uh, wind the clock here. It's a very long description. Good night, Tim in the bin. It's Tim in the bin. Which Morris is it, baby? Is it Matt playing over this side, isn't it? I think it might be. I think it's Matt playing on this side. I think it's the number two who's going on. Yep. And uh, as a result, it's going to be a penalty to Gerringon. And oh, they're putting the top on and they're going to take the two. Oh, maybe they got the, maybe they got, maybe they got, got a bit on there. Oh, oh, but how dare you say that? Who's going to go next step? Who's going to go next step? Who's going to go next step? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Such a bit on this guy. I bet you could have found someone. Ball goes away to Ricks and Russell, he goes to the left, he goes back and goes, to, oh gee, went horribly close to scoring there. And uh, as we look towards this uh, touchline, let's hope they can clear where it is because I can't see what's happening at the moment. I can see someone bending over and passing the ball, it goes to Rain. Rain plays it down, Rain's almost through, he's not far away, he's going to be held up, is he? Oh, they form a ruck, they both, both sides form a rugby ruck. And finally he goes to ground and the referee says held up. And that uh, that will be enough for Gerringong, one would think. There's 22 seconds left on the clock. And uh, as a result, Gerringong uh, will win the continuous call team uh, trophy. The Daniel Robert Morse Challenge Shield, Gerringong will retain it. So uh, the ball is fed back the open side and it goes away to Mulhall. He's had a mighty second half, this fella. He's sure to try. He's taking the ball ahead. And I reckon when the siren goes, he may well be the man with the ball. They're not far away from the siren. Ball is going to be played. There it is. There it is. It's all over. It's all over. Gerringong has beaten Kramer 34 to 24. And... Uh,
a good win to the Gillingong Lions, considering they were throwing 18-6 within the shadows of half-time. All-time in first grade, the Lions have run out with it, 34 to points to 24. Russell, the Perry Phillips, the Russell, tries Russell, to Russell, Nathan Fallwood, Cal Collins, and Corey Mulhall. So that's Phillips, six tries, Russell, and Russell, and that would mean that he's picked five goals, Jake though, Taylor. Five goals. The goals. The the goals. The one the one two tries to Cameron Cornell, one to Cameron Whittaker, one to Ethan Ford. for the Cameron Knight, Cameron Cornell scored two tries. Ethan Ford won Cameron Whittaker won. So uh, there were four tries uh, then uh, Zola, who was the goal kicker, managed to kick four goals from four attempts. So in the end, a comfortable victory to Gerringong, but uh, I wouldn't say it was all one-way traffic, considering at one stage, Mark Levy, they trailed by 18 points to six, but they win the game on the low scoreboard, 34-24. David, congratulations. That was absolutely sensational. And ladies and gentlemen, what David Moore has just done and what Ray's done in previous years is not easy, especially when you come down to these country grounds and you don't really get a chance to see much football down this area. So, David, you didn't miss a beat. And uh, if you could please, David, because that's your inaugural call of the Continuous Tall Team Cup, we'd like to invite you and the immortal Bob Fulton, the vice-captain, to go downstairs and present the Shield and also the Continuous Tall Team Cup for 2018. Congratulations, Davey and Daryl. Well done, also to Bunker Bob as well. Thank you very much. Daryl, great call out to you as well. Back around the grounds we go. We do that, of course, for Mortgage House, James Willis. Mark, the Bunker is checking a possible try to the Warriors at 11 before half-time. Warriors 2, Dragons 0 at Wynn Stadium. All right, thank you, James. We'll keep coming around the grounds to you for regular updates. Uh, a great crowd in attendance down here this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And big news, uh, big news on the continuous call team. The NRL has the mobile bunker, and we tonight will be broadcasting not only the 5.30 game,